haters, by the way, is the weather underground bomber, the terrorist. The FBI said the Weather Underground Organization, which took credit for the bombing, is the same radical group which was responsible for the bombing of the U.S. Capitol in 1971 and the Pentagon in 1972. This headline from the 19, 1970 says it all. Four bombs at Murtaugh Home, notorious uh, terror group, the Weather Underground, claiming responsibility for an attack on the family of a New York state Supreme Court justice. The bombing was led by radical Bill Ayers, the same guy screen right, uh, who eventually formed a relationship of some sort with Democrat presidential nominee Barack Obama. While my parents, my brother, sister, and I were asleep in our house, uh, the Weather Underground uh, launched an attack on our family home, set off uh, at least three, possibly four bombs, one of them under the gas tank of the family car. Car bomb. Looking to kill us. The New York cell of the Weather Underground uh, that launched the attack on my family. Mm -hmm. uh, three weeks later, at Bill Ayer's direction, they were assembling bombs in Greenwich Village right. in order to attack uh, the officers club at Fort Dix, New Jersey, whose organization uh, crossed the lives mm -hmm. of at least three, if not more, police officers. Bill Ayer's wife, Bernadine Dorn, also one of the original leaders of the Weather Underground, uh, and the woman who took credit for the bombing at our home and in other New York targets. Bernadine Dorn uh, was a, uh, an attorney by training. She couldn't get admitted to bar because of her crimes. Mm -hmm. uh, Bill Ayers' uh, family got her a job at a large Chicago law firm, Sidley and Austin, in the 1980s. She was a contemporary at that law firm in the 80s with Michelle Obama. I brought up the subject of what's going to happen after we take over the government. Uh, you know, we we become responsible then for administrating, you know, 250 million people. And there was no answers. No one had given any thought to economics. How are you going to clothe and feed these people? The only thing that I could get was that they expected that the Cubans and the North Vietnamese and the Chinese and the Russians would all want to occupy different portions of the United States. They also believed that their immediate responsibility would be to protect against what they called the counter-revolution. And uh, they felt that this counter-revolution could best be guarded against by creating and establishing re-education centers in the Southwest. Uh, where we would take all the people who needed to be re-educated into the new way of thinking and teach them how things were going to be. I ask, well, what is going to happen to those people that we can't re-educate, that are die-hard cap capitalists? And the reply was that they'd have to be eliminated. And when I pursued this further, they estimated that they would have to eliminate 25 million people in these re-education centers. And when I say eliminate, I mean kill 25 million people. I want you to imagine sitting in a room with 25 people, most of which have graduate degrees from Columbia and other well-known educational centers, and hear them figuring out the logistics for the elimination of 25 million people. And they were dead serious.